I thought as often as I talk about books, besides the Bible, that's where you want to start, but I do love other books. And if you've been coming to our church family at all, then you know, I think Brad likes books. Well, check it out. If you've ever wondered, what does his office look like? How many books does he have? What does he do with his books? Well, here we go. This shouldn't surprise you if you know me at all. They are not random in here. They are in some sort of order. So right over here, I've got all my Bibles and books about Bible background, just an overview of the Bible. What's it all about? That's what all this is about. Here are my Old Testament commentaries. Here moves on down to more Old Testament commentaries, minor prophets, but here we go with church. Church, church leadership. Then I head into more just leadership, 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 teaching, preaching, being a pastor, praying, worshiping, church history. Oh, knowing God, attributes of God, holiness of God, repentance and changing. Oh, one of my favorite categories right here. Notice it's like two shelves. Grace. I buy books about grace left and right. Just love that subject. Then right here, these are on deck. So these are new books that I have not read yet. And I come over here and I choose some as I finish books, which by the way, last year was my banner year. Most ever, 82 books. But I had the whole summer off, so there you go. Then right here, I've got counseling, biblical counseling, all kinds of depression, suicide, death, all of it, marriage, parenting. Then I've got parenting here, manliness here, female here, money and communication, devotions, and then one of my favorite shelves in this whole room, biographies. Notice this, biography, 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 yea, verily, biography. Why? Because if you want to grow, read about other people who have struggled. You're not the first. Whatever you're going through, you're probably not the first. Oh, I love reading biographies. Then we pop over here and we jump up to politics, culture, 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 and courage. Then we've got the cross, books about the cross, books about the resurrection. And then we go, Jesus Jesus, life of Jesus. And then we go New Testament commentaries, New Testament commentaries, New Testament commentaries, New Testament commentaries. Then we've got word studies, Greek usage, Hebrew usage, Bible dictionaries, and then just some fun stuff. I like stuff by sociologists. Why do people do what they do? We've got some fun stuff like that. And then I don't do much of it, but a little bit of fiction. And if I do fiction, it's classics like Frankenstein, Charles Dickens, uh, the great, the great uh, Grapes of Wrath, stuff like that. I'll grab those every now and then. And then right here, spiritual warfare, discipleship, evangelism. But besides books, if you're thinking, who else spends the most time in there with him? Three people, besides the Holy Spirit. Three people spend the most time with me. And I've got them on my wall because of the impact they've had on me. These are three people that have impacted me after Jesus Christ and after tracking with the Apostle Paul through the New Testament. Then it's them. Winston Churchill. Love this guy. You want to learn about leadership? You want to see an example of courage? Wow. Winston Churchill. And so if you're new to him, oh, there's so many books written about him and I've read so many books. Start with this one. Oh, here's a place to start. This was a New York Times bestseller by Candace Millard. It is a page turner. It'll kind of help you understand what put him on the map and got him ready to be even become prime minister. And it was the Boer War in South Africa. This is so good. It's how he was taken captive as a journalist and escaped from the prison camp all by himself. Two guys were supposed to go with him. And the night he dropped over the wall, the other two didn't drop over the wall. And there he was with a candy bar in his pocket. And he went 600 miles on his own through enemy territory to get home. Fantastic. Winston Churchill. Abraham Heschel. You might not know that name. And a friend of mine that's not even a Christian, but he talks to me about the Bible regularly. We've been talking for 15, 20 years now. He said, Brad, you've got to read Abraham Heschel. He's not a Christian. 
He's a Jewish rabbi and a philosopher, but oh my goodness, he understands awe and holiness and worship. He's one of my favorite authors, and if that name's new to you, ooh, start with this one. This is A Philosophy of Religion, Man is Not Alone. Don't be put off by the title. It, I mean, it's got such meaty sentences that I reread, and it just moves me to think about how awesome and transcendent and high and lifted up God is. In fact, check out this quote that I've got right here from Abraham. Forget your sense of awe, and the universe becomes a marketplace for you. That's what's happening in our world today, even with Christians, sadly. The loss of awe is the great block to insight. I don't want to lose awe. I don't want to be left with just a God who's right here, right now, helping me. I'm grateful, but I want to keep him high and lifted up. And then, Eugene Peterson. He just died the last couple years, and oh, I love this man. For many reasons, but one of them was he was the same, he was the pastor of the same church for 33 years. He's motivating me to keep going as a local pastor. He had such a heart for the Lord and for the church. And he's got some great books, not just for pastors. If he's new to you, start right here. Read A Long Obedience in the Same Direction. Subtitle, Discipleship in an Instant Society. What I love about him is he understands things don't happen fast. It's over the course of a lifetime. Who are you becoming? Ah, those are the three guys that have impacted me the most besides Jesus. Check some of it out.